In our next lesson on transcription and RNA from chapter 21, we want to consider both prokaryotic and eukaryotic transcription promoters. We want to first examine bacterial promoters, as that is a simpler system. In order to do so, let's look at RNA polymerase in a prokaryotic system. The core enzyme is composed of five subunits, two alpha subunits, beta, beta prime, and omega. We have an illustration of a surface model of the core enzyme on the lower left of your screen here, and the different subunits are differentially colored so that you can see how they're related to one another. You're not responsible for the details of this structure. The channel through which the DNA passes is highlighted in yellow. It's the core enzyme that's actually the catalytic portion of the enzyme that synthesizes RNA. However, in order to initiate transcription, a second protein, another protein, is required, and that's called the sigma factor. The core enzyme complexed with the sigma factor is referred to as the holoenzyme. It's the whole enzyme, and the sigma factor is required to initiate transcription. The holoenzyme is pictured on the right, and you can see the sigma factor here in reddish brown. The sigma fa factor is responsible for guiding RNA polymerase to the target DNA sequence. In other words, the sigma factor actually binds the bacterial promoter. Once the sigma factor recognizes and binds to the promoter and transcription is initiated, the sigma factor releases from the complex and only the core enzyme remains to continue and complete transcription. The sigma factor that has been released can therefore bind with another core enzyme and initiate transcription on another promoter. What we have at the bottom of the screen here is a sequence alignment for some strong E. coli promoters. They're strong E. coli promoters because transcription is very successful from these promoters. In other words, the sigma factor binds tightly to these promoters. Let's look first at that transcription start site. It's denoted as plus one and highlighted in brown here. This will be the first nucleotide in the message. Everything upstream of that in the DNA is given a negative number. And you can see the promoters highlighted in yellow are composed of two regions, one centered at minus 10 and the other at minus 35. If you look at the minus 10 region, you can see it contains a primarily T and A residues, and that's why it's referred to as the Tata box. So each sigma factor will bind to a, a certain set of promoters, that is, certain target or consensus sequence in this minus 10 and minus 35 region. And that's why the sigma factor that associates with the core enzyme is the first level of transcriptional control in prokaryotic systems. In other words, there are multiple sigma factors. If a different sigma factor binds to the core enzyme, then it will bind to different promoters and therefore different genes will be expressed. Let's compare that bacterial system to eukaryotic promoters. And here we have a figure from your book at the top of the screen. As you can see, there are much more complex promoters and the RNA polymerases that recognize them are also more complex, as we might expect. So there are multiple promoter elements. We can see highlighted in green here is the Tata box. It's similar to the prokaryotic Tata box. We also see a BRE element that's recognized by transcription factor 2B, and we'll talk about TF2B in just a moment. There's also an initiator sequence in the center here, and that contains the transcription start site. You'll notice the plus 1. There are also, in this case, downstream elements, an MTE, or motif 10 element, and a DPE, a downstream promoter element. Those portions of eukaryotic promoters that you are expected to remember have been highlighted with an asterisk. You need to know the Tata box and you need to know the initiator sequence because that contains the transcription start site. The other thing you want to recognize is that there are so many elements because it prevents random transcription 
from different promoters and we'll talk about that more in just a moment. Not all of the promoters contain all of these elements and they work synergistically. In other words we can mix and match different promoter elements in a, a way of controlling transcription. You'll also want to recognize in this case there are actually promoter elements downstream of the start site and that's distinct from the prokaryotic system. What about the proteins that recognize these different elements? Well there are general transcription factors and they're referred to as transcription factors to A, B, D, E, F, and H. The two refers to the fact that there are factors specific for RNA polymerase II, the polymerase responsible for making messenger RNA, and they bind to different elements in the promoters. TF2B binds to that BRE element, and the TBB protein of transcription factor 2D, that is the Tata binding protein, binds to the Tata box. So it's not a simple core complex to transcribe every gene as we saw in the bacterial system. And so we can mix and match promoter elements and we can mix and match the transcription factors that recognize them. So we get variable subunit composition and this gives us tremendous control not only over which genes are expressed but also to what level. The elements or transcription factors you're responsible for recognizing have been highlighted with an arrow. You need to recognize the fact that the TF2 refers to the fact that it's specific for RNA polymerase II. You need to know transcription factor 2B binds to BRE and that TBP or Tata binding protein binds to the Tata box. In our next video lesson we'll look at what proteins and DNA elements participate in regulating transcription.